It is highest. You know, the... I mean, maybe, maybe this isn't true for you. Maybe I'm the only sinner here in this place. But... In my experience, the longer that I've been a Christian, the longer that I've walked with God, the farther I realize and the more depth I discover that God is working in me to uncover those root systems that have permeated into my being to cause me to not be all that he would choose for me to be in godliness and in righteousness. And you know, I think I understand Paul when he says that uh, after having done you know, all the work, lest he be thought of as a castaway. And we mostly look at Paul as being such a great evangelist and a great apostle that you know, we would hardly think that God would cast him aside. So where does that put us? <laughs> Oops. I think it's a healthy thing sometimes to recognize our own faults and failures and to recount them to ourselves and to confess our faults to one another recognizing that there is none righteous no not one there's nobody that's perfect and no one has finally achieved that goal that we have that God is going to perfect in us when we die but keeping a healthy balance of the two the failures or the the distance that we have to go as well as the person that God has brought us to be so far because if you look back then you realize that God has brought you so far and you have great joy over who you're becoming and then if you look up you recognize you have so much farther to go so it keeps a proper humility I think in balance of ministry that though others may because you may have some knowledge, look at you and at times claim you're full of pride or some other issue they may have that they're projecting on you. If you don't respond to that and let them vent on you, then it washes off of you as outer extremities of dirt that just simply needs to be washed away. And you just pray for them and let it go that way. Because God is at work in you, both to do and to will of his good pleasure, but also to cause you to become more like him. So, maybe you're not there today. Maybe you are. Maybe you're on your way. <laughs> I know I am. The account with purity. Out of the heart proceeds from Matthew 15, 19. We begin by trusting our ignorance and calling it innocence by trusting our innocence and calling it purity. And when we hear these rugged statements of our Lord's, we shrink and say, but I never felt any of those awful things in my heart. We resent what Jesus Christ reveals. Either Jesus, is, either Jesus Christ is the supreme authority on the human heart, or he is not worth paying attention to at all. Am I prepared to trust his penetrating look, or do I prefer to trust my innocent ignorance? If I make conscious innocence the test, I am likely to come to a place where I find with a shuddering awakening that what Jesus Christ said is true, and I shall be appalled at the possibility of evil and wrong in me. As long as I remain under the refuge of innocence, I am living in a fool's paradise. If I have never been a sinner, I have never been evil, if I have never been a blackguard, if I have never been a failure, the reason is a mixture of cowardice and the protection of a civilized life. But when I am undressed before God, I find that Jesus Christ is right in his diagnosis of me. We are all sinners and fallen short of the glory of God. The only thing that safeguards is the redemption of Jesus Christ. If I will hand myself over to him, I need never experience the terrible possibilities that are in my heart. Purity is too deep down for me to get to naturally, but when the Holy Spirit comes in, he brings into the center of my personal life the very spirit that was manifested in the life of Jesus, meaning the Holy Spirit which is unsullied purity. In me there dwelleth no good thing, and in you there is nothing good. 
nothing. But when God puts something good in you, that good is of God, and that good that is of God is the Holy Spirit. He is the good in you. So any good that you do is of God and not of yourselves, lest you should be able to boast. But rather it is God working out of you, through you, about you, and in you by His Holy Spirit so that it would always be His glory and not yours that's being accomplished. Saying I owe it all to Jesus doesn't give God the glory, it gives you the glory of being with Him. So the reality of Him doing it through you, that you no longer live but Christ lives in you, and the work that you, the life that you now live in the flesh, you live by the will of the Son of God who died and gave Himself for you, isn't being said so much as it's being excused and set aside because you're still saying, I did it with the help of Jesus. No, Jesus did it through you without your help. All that is good comes from God. The reality is that in us, all that is bad really was our fault. And the reality of knowing that we are sinful flesh maintains itself throughout the days that we live on this earth until one day this corruptible flesh is putting on incorruptibility so that until that day in me and you there dwelleth no good thing except for Jesus who lives in us.